We all have a beginning. A moment that changes us, shapes us into who we are. For some, it is a quiet turn, planned, ushered in with precision. For others, it is a sharper twist of fate, leaving scars that never heal. For most, these moments are endured, accepted, even forgotten, while there are those who struggle to forgive, to forget. And there are some, just a few, who pass through the fire, wanting more. I know my beginning. I know where it will take me. It will fall to me, dark, the mightiest of mages, to face my demons and save Eliwold. I summon you, fiend of the lower world. Rise and face your bane. Dark, wake up! You can daydream after your initiation. The Masters are waiting for you in the Hallowed Hall. The door is ajar. Bort has set the combination dial to Shadow Earth Shadow. It's a good thing I found you, Dark. It's not like I can check the records hall, and my finder amulet doesn't work anymore. Nervous? You should be. Just don't be late like I was, unless you want to repeat a whole year. Good luck! I don't know the combination. Water, air, earth. I need to enter a combination for the hall I want to visit, then press the gem in the center. Welcome, Initiate. You have trained long and hard under our roof. Your element has chosen you well. Already? Your time as a novice is drawing to a close. Soon you will demonstrate mastery over your power. The time has come to claim your element. Before you begin, you must affirm that which has chosen you. Thoughts reflect your nature and your element alike. Respond carefully. You see an old woman lost in the market quarter. She appears confused and begs you to help her. A fight breaks out in the local tavern. The barkeep looks to you for help. The giftless, or non-mages, are... What is magic for? In your responses, you have demonstrated an affinity with the Earth. Do you agree with this assessment, Initiate? Then affirm now the element that has chosen you. You have affirmed your commitment to the water. Your thoughts become fluid, and each drop sees your wisdom rise. You may request your first gifts from the Sphere of Knowledge. To earn the title of your kindred, you must fulfill three tasks. Your first awaits across the lake, upon Lone Island. There you will find a banished priestess, her beauty rivaled only by her cunning and treachery. Take but a lock of her hair. Your second lies within the valley of our closest mountains, where our winged guardians keep watch over the town. 
Most prized are their griffin's eggs. Return with one. The forest conceals your final task. Many beings and beasts dwell there, most with laws of their own. Bring back the horn of a trinacorn. A warning. The townspeople are tolerant of our magic, yet care little for it. Pass by them as the gentlest breeze, and leave them to their small affairs. Go now, focus on your tasks. You have until the new day dawns. Farewell, young novice. May your deeds ensure you a place in the memory of others. Elements guide you. Ready for your tasks? I wrote them down for you, just in case. Do not ask me how I know them. There is a reason I enjoy this job. Just try not to make the ink run. By the way, don't forget to acquire your first spells from the Sphere of Knowledge in the training hall. The combination is fire, light, light. It appears to be an in I have waited ten years for this. Seeker of power, know your element. Say not, but show. Of what do I speak? Curved, flat, jagged, or smooth. Delivered by salty foam. Some contain sounds, others riches. Sold by the seashore. I know, it's... Show. I have to find what it is asking for. Something to do with my element, I suspect. I should search the appropriate hall. If it isn't nailed down... I thought you might come this way. Initiates enjoy partaking of the fountain before setting out on their tasks. Calms the nerves. Come, drink. Works wonders, doesn't it? Of course you would know that. I cannot recall any water mage who has studied our elemental runes as thoroughly as you. I look forward to seeing you join our ranks once your tasks are completed. I remember when you were first brought here. What was it, ten years ago? I had not long been initiated myself. Well, perhaps it was a little longer. Never mind that. I wondered then how your mother could give up such a beautiful child to strangers whose ways she could not know. Oh, but I do not mean to dredge up such memories. The past can be as potent as an illusion, and I have spent long enough studying those. You must stay focused on the tasks ahead. Sometimes I glimpse the dreams of those closest to me. Often they make little sense. But yours of late have been clear. I dream of demons, whatever they mean. You dream of greatness, the mightiest of mages. Is that a bad thing? If one's motives are pure, no. But few achieve so delicate a balance, and fewer still maintain it. What are you saying? Let the trials you face reflect your true nature. The lessons you learn will serve you. 
perhaps even save you. Good luck, Dark. I should fill this flask in the fountain hall. Mage's water is always a good thing to have. The fountain requires a donation of precious metal. Ten gold coins. You will need an empty flask to contain the water. There, I filled my flask with mage's water. Receive your power. Yes! <laughs> The sphere has judged you worthy, I take it. Excellent. You are progressing well. Thanks to you. Ah, <laughs> but that is my duty, no? A far cry from this training hall's intended purpose. When our warriors outnumbered the scholars, do you know what you are seeking yet? A lock of the priestess's hair, a griffin's egg, and a trinicorn's horn. <laughs> One might think we were training thieves. Good luck in your tasks. Feel free to consult with me if you wish, and do not forget, the world beyond these walls is treacherous. Trust no one. Now, to business. Your trials mark your competence to carry a conductor. Take this. Bear it well. It will channel your element's gifts, allowing you to perform less passive magic. It's handy in a fight, you mean? More like essential. Listen carefully, Doc. The conductor is to be used strictly for defense. And under no circumstances are you to inflict harm upon the giftless humans within the town's walls. This law transcends all others, and has done so since the Orkstein Wars. Now that you have received the first of your spells, I suggest you familiarize yourself with your new abilities. Your raw skills are another matter. As you gain knowledge and experience, ensure to invest them wisely. That way you will improve the attributes best suited to your nature. In this lies the key to unlocking your greater potential. Consider how your recent experience might best benefit you. Decide which areas you wish to improve in. The conductor alone is a powerful weapon, but it can be made more so. As you venture beyond the safety of the tower, you may chance upon the odd gemstone. These are known to contain particular properties for those who can assess and harness them. When set into your conductor, you will find your abilities enhanced. Only two may be embedded at any one time. I have been keeping one such gem for you. Consider it an early initiation gift. I confess the power contained within that gem has waned over time. It will not take you long to locate a better one. For now, though, it will suffice. Set it in to one of your conductor slots. Well done. I shall teach you about your newly acquired combat spells. A challenger for Dark! I'm sending you back to your element. Okay, Doc. Let us start at the beginning. While Ice Shard may be your first spell, 
Think of it as your last line of defense. It uses little mana, but packs a powerful punch once mastered. Go ahead and cast it at your opponent. Very good. Even when magically exhausted, you may still summon enough energy to deter your attackers. Aside from being less effective, it's best if you do not let it come to that. Your accuracy may suffer in the beginning. Apply your intelligence at any given opportunity to improve your prowess. The clear spell will enclose you inside a fluidic bubble, rendering you impervious to harm for a short time. The force of the barrier will also push nearby foes away. Cast it on yourself now. Good. Remember, enemies won't attack what they can't see. You, however, may continue to cast magic while the spell is active. Now that we have covered everything, would you like a one-on-one -on -one practice session? Well done, Dark. Try harder next time, man. Now you are prepared for leaving the tower, at least. Should you yearn for further knowledge, seek the Mixing Martial with Magical Compendium in our reading hall. By the way, Dark, if you have not yet visited the Observation Hall, you should do so. How do I access it? Try Light Air Air. Jonas? Jonas! Hmm... I don't have any reason to take it out. Best to leave it in there so Jonas won't have to start from scratch the next time he reads this book. Ah, you startled me. I was making a precise calculation of... Uh, of... Well, I knew what it was a moment ago. I suppose you are off to take your test now, hmm? I remember my initiation, I think. It had to do with toads. Or was it frogs? Something messy, anyway. They always are, these things. May I use your telescope? Of course. What do you want to see? Lone Island. All right. All set. I see the palace on Lone Island. Is there something wrong with your telescope, Jonas? The palace on Lone Island keeps appearing and disappearing. Have you tried not blinking? I'm being serious. How awful. Oh, I know. It's some kind of water magic or other. Those bubbly blues do love their illusions. My telescope, poor thing, is trying to counter it. So if I go there, I won't be able to see it? Exactly. See what? Ah, <sighs> never mind. Keep your head in the clouds! Illusions? Of course. Their fluidic nature has always intrigued our kind. I am sure there's a book in the reading hall if you are keen. Transparent fluidity, if I recall. It is required reading for advanced water mages. You might as well get a head start on it now, since you will have your tests completed in no time. I know that book. You can find it now. Only you would know a book-finding spell. Ah, uh, yes. Varner loves that one.
You should be able to locate it on the shelf. I take it you want to cross Lorelei Lake? I have a compass that will allow you to navigate your way to the island. Thank you. Not so fast. Uh, what do you want, Cray? Money? Don't be ridiculous. I left something in the priestess's palace when I was there. I want you to get it back for me. You mean the priestess took it from you? I'm going to ignore that. The important thing is the item itself. A sapphire brooch encrusted with four smaller stones. It was a gift from someone who has since left Iganor. A girl? That is my business. Now, as you know, we are not permitted on the island unless it is part of our initiation. Promise to retrieve it for me, and I will give you the compass. All right. Deal. Good. Here you go. Oh, and you will also need this. A scrap of paper? What is this? A riddle of some kind? That is for you to work out. I have held up my end. Make sure you do the same. I would hate to see you disadvantaged for breaking your word. What is that supposed to mean? Let us hope you don't find out. I can't believe I've lived in the tower for 10 years and this is the first time I get to explore the region. I should not... It's loose. Flasks for sale. Buy one and get another at exactly the same price. Do you mind eight-legged arachnids? The spiderling's glands secrete a venom that is ideal for creating antidotes. I shall pay for any amount you can obtain. And that is how we defeated the giant squid. How did you travel between the islands without boats? We islanders are expert raft builders. There are no equals. I'll take your word for it. Do you have an eye for nature's offerings? I'm in need of more brown mushrooms. Bring me some and I'll compensate you. Since I left the islands, my home, I've missed the taste of exotic fish. I hear there are creatures of the sea that can wander the land. Bring me the flesh of the Cassie Puss, and I shall reward you as best I can. The poster you see here depicts a highly valued customer. He went missing a while back. For reasons I'll never fathom, he ventured into the wastelands. Not surprisingly, that was the last anyone saw of him. I don't expect we'll see him again. I keep the poster displayed as a warning, more than anything. Hey, Finn. We've got a new boy in town. I can see that, Bug. You'll have to excuse my friend. The name's Fend. Dark. He's a mage. I can see that, Pug. Where are you from? Stew Pond, originally. Bit of a sinkhole, I hear. I don't remember. Trust me, you're not missing much. We haven't been here long ourselves. We like to keep moving. We don't want anyone catching up. Shut up, Pug. I'll say one thing for your hometown mage. At least it's too small to have its own lord. Fend has a problem with the Thor- Pug. Listen, Doc. 
May I call you that? Why don't we get better acquainted? Is this your first time in the tavern? Uh, yeah. Excellent! Then you'd best follow the locals' tradition. New boys by the rounds. What'll you have? What have you got? Ale. Is that it? Well, there's the special that the rough-looking fellow over there's having. But it would probably kill a child like you. The man near the open window? Yeah, keep your wits around him. Is he trouble? Who knows? Rumor has it he's off the wastelands. Or used to be. So he'd know his way around there? Probably. But only the town full would ask. And so, to cover the necessary costs of maintaining my manor, the price of ale will be increased by 15%. Secondly, the appointment of a new town sheriff following the recent passing of the late law keeper Kristen is expected within the month. In the meantime, any criminals, however trivial their indiscretions, will answer personally to my gods and shall receive the full hospitality of the Lord's basement. Thirdly, let it be known that there is to be a new tax called the King's Tribute, this will help curry favor with his majesty, so that he may look with a generous eye toward Iganor's most humble lord. And its community. Finally, anyone caught in my private gardens will receive a fine of no less than 5% of their seasonal profits. This concludes the announcements. I bid you, the working class, good day. Hopefully he's too inebriated to notice the difference. It wasn't. That should clear them out. I'll just take the dry ones.
I don't suppose you can talk. I don't suppose you can think. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry. I'm not giving you my sap. It's all I have. It's important, and I only need a little. You say that now, but you'll come back for more. They always do. Who are they? Have others been taking your sap? Not my sap. My bark. My branches. Even my fruit. Pieces of me. Taken bit by bit. They do not even ask. Do they think trees feel no pain? I've always assumed as much. Mm, try being enchanted. It's not as much fun as it sounds. Perhaps I can find the pieces that were taken from you. I do not care about the bark or the branches. The fruit, though, I will not bear another again. And I cannot propagate without my seeds. Who took the fruit from you? The human villain did not give its name. I think it was female. You think? Humans all look alike. I'll see what I can do. apples plucked for your convenience and priced accordingly I understand you may have some rare fruit for sale rare yes for sale no might I interest you in a trade that depends there is another fruit I wanted to get my hands on it's called apple bliss one alone would fetch double the price of a dozen screaming tree fruit Except they only grow in a clearing along the leftmost edge of the forest. Naturally. Bring me one, and you have a deal. I have your apple bliss. I'm impressed. As promised, here's the fruit from the screaming tree. I shouldn't have bothered, to be honest. They taste a little sour. They're probably homesick. What? Nothing. Thank you. Could you nail these four planks together? Hmm. If it's a matter of money... Hmm. Is that enough? Hmm. Thank you, blacksmith. seeds yes now your sap take as much as you need
The airtight kegs have been securely fastened to the raft with the rope I found. That should do it. It would make no sense without the compass it Nothing. It's an illusion, just like Jonas said. There. I've added one drop of sap. I'll save the rest. I left my... Working hard, blacksmith? <sighs> Sweat from labor's brow. Ugh. I've added two drops of sweat. Ew. I have added three drops of a potent beverage. I can't use... I can't use... There is some writing on it. Thank you. 
What is this? A man? No, not quite. Another child enters my domain, seeking to earn his place. To what do I owe the pleasure, Initiate? Have you come to pay homage to the priestess Amankul? To honor the once and great ruler of Armanash? Do you seek to look upon beauty so immeasurable that men and women once gave their lives for a single glimpse? No? Perhaps you have a gift, a tribute befitting one of my glory and stature. I thought not. A message from your masters, then? Will you inform me I have concluded my sentence? Am I to be freed at last? But I jest. Your kin are not the forgiving kind. Not even after 500 years. I know why you are here. To take, as those who have come before you have taken. Already I tire of your presence. State what you want of me, child. I can't permit my... I have come to ask for a lock of your hair. A lock of my hair? Were I to give it willingly, you would find it no easy task. The curse which has kept me so long, unchanged, prevents even a single strand from leaving my head. A pity the same could not be said of my followers. You will need a special blade, a dagger. It is kept in my treasury. Bring it to me. You must think me a fool if you believe I'd hand you something like that. A fool you may be, but I know what you want, young one. It is not so rare a glint I see in your eyes. That blade can help you, for it contains power, far greater than your masters would let a novice wield. In exchange for your assistance, I will allow you to keep it. My jewels. My breath. Now my hair. What next? It was forged from a rare enchanted metal, and dipped in the blood of a wyvern's heart. You will not be disappointed when you learn of its properties. Eager to leave? I can imagine. Uh-oh. I suppose I should have expected that. Impressive. I wonder if the Masters know about this collection. Okay, that's weird. Is the priestess toying with me? The chest isn't locked. But of course, it's empty. 
got it. There's a short length of metal inside. It seems to be a piece of something. There, the prong fits securely into the little hole on the device. There is a sapphire brooch inside, encrusted with four smaller stones. You are most resourceful. I have one last task for you. Only the purity of Lake Lurelei will reawaken the magic of this blade. It must be dipped by my hand, else the dagger cannot resist the curse of my imprisonment. Bring me water from the lake, and you shall have what you came for. I have the water. Finally, can you imagine, for centuries surrounded by the means, without the means to attain it? My jailers have a sense of humor, at least. But they sent initiates, one after the other. Hundreds must have stepped through those doors, each with their trinkets. Piece by piece, drop by drop, I acquired enough to fashion this blade. You created the dagger? Why? It does not matter. With its magic restored, I am now ready. I only require a small lock of hair. A lock? Silly boy! I will not waste the blade's power on a trim! Then what? You must forgive the deception. What do you think of your new home? Why so sad? Does the child miss his mother? She does not remember you. As for your father... Don't talk about my family! What is this? Motivation. I have had lifetimes to divine the conditions of this cage. For an eternity and more, I thought this my endless prison. Yet no cage is inescapable. It may have taken longer than the world needed to forget me. But I have discovered its weakness. The generosity of others. You, my almost mage, are going to free me. What? Simply agree to take my place, and my time here is ended. Before you answer, consider. I can teach you much. More than any of your brethren are willing or able. You dream of becoming the mightiest of mages. I have seen that future, and can help you achieve it. You need only say yes. A small price, you must agree. Why the dagger, then? A mere formality. A ritual. Nothing you won't forget in a few centuries. You can forget it now! I won't help you! Do not be so hasty. You will not find the alternative pleasant. I will leave you here to reconsider. I have learned patience, among other things. When you have made your decision, you need only scream for me. Five hundred years. Who could live like that? Unchanging, eternal, decaying within? I can smell time's waste in this dungeon. It's sick with entropy. Even the walls. The cracks in the metal shackle have given way. Now for the other shackle.
This device has come loose from its wall fixtures. Sneaking into a woman's bed chamber, such impudence! Etiquette doesn't apply to people like you. People like me? In 500 years, there have been none! You stand before an ocean storm, child. My will is but its waves. All I see is a failed mage, drowning in her own irrelevance. Strong words spoken by those whose heads now line my walls. So choose your next carefully. I offer you immortality and power. Tell me your answer. Why? Are you going deaf in your old age? As you wish. I need only wait for the next initiate. Whereas you, pupil, are due for your lesson! They both collapsed at the same time. Interesting. I wonder who, or what, Amon Kool was intending to summon to the palace. Finally, I have a lock of her hair. Wait, don't kill me. I can still help you. Show you the path you seek to power. I'm listening. There is a tome, not in any library, but in the hands of one who does not understand its power. You are fated to find both. Assuming you're right, what then? Seek the tome, then I shall instruct you further. She has fallen unconscious. Is this more guile? Should I believe her? Eternal imprisonment is punishment enough. I already have the lock of hair. She's not in the mood to talk. For a change. I had better return to the hallowed hall. You have returned, Initiate Dark. Your efforts thus far have proven your value to this tower. We accept the lock of hair as proof of your accomplishment. Do not grow complacent. The most challenging tasks lie ahead. The Priestess Amankul lives, despite your opportunity to dispatch her. 
Mercy is a trait we encourage among all our castes. Stand tall in the knowledge that you represent us well. Rest now, then turn your mind to the mountains, where you will need wits as sharp as the eyes that keep watch from there. Not yet. You! You're one of them! From that tower! Most astute. What do you want? A word, and your cooperation. I can make it worth your while. Keep talking. I think it's time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge. Word is getting around that you vanquished the Priestess in battle. Well done. Seeker of power, employ your element. Find the key in a place opposed. Unlock what is yours. In a place opposed. It won't be in the same hall I searched last time, that's for sure. On the contrary... Now that I have the key, what is it supposed to unlock? I have been trying to open this chest since I arrived 10 years ago. Could it be that this key... There's a scroll inside the chest. Do these runes pertain to my next spells? I'd love to know who created that sphere. Receive your power. Dark. You didn't tell me she was a water mage. A dark water mage. There is a difference. What of the priestess? She is as I found her. Though many would have it otherwise, you did the right thing. Let's hope so. Dark, I have been meaning to speak with you. I had a vision recently. Of me? Yes. You were tempted by a promise. Though your intent was not clear. You gave into it willingly. The vision ended before I could glimpse your fate. All I am certain of is that it begins with a spilled mug. I wish I could be more specific. It's fine. I know exactly where to look. Take care. Should you follow this path, the return journey may not be so easy. Discretion is your ally, Dark. No good can come of a rash approach. What are rivers without their mountains?
dark. You survived the palace. You don't have to sound so surprised. I'm sorry. Ready to read up on your second task? What do you need to know? Something about the mountains. I know just the thing. You should be able to find it now. You took care of the priestess, I see. You saw? I watched everything. I'm not sure whether I should feel grateful or disturbed. Why not both? Without a doubt, the best of the three. All those feathers. Keep your head in the clouds. Discretion. A proud and noble race, born from the ashes of the old world, tread lightly in their presence. I have set eyes upon it only once. It is a great privilege to be allowed even a glimpse. Jonas earned his passage, but he will not say how. This one sounds fairly straightforward. I am not a huge fan of heights myself. Should you desire to meet with Chief Hawkane or his son Falk, I suggest diplomacy. Failing that, grow some wings. In either case, you will not be able to fight or bluff your way into their valley. The guards are well trained. It would be unwise to engage them in combat. That's the spirit. That would only aggravate the wasps. The berries have been crushed into a fine powder. Dis I find they are less troublesome in the rain. Ah! Without it, irritable creatures, their stings can leave a nasty rash. Assuming they don't kill you outright, don't get too close. Is there a way to pacify them? Have you tried singing to them? No, and I'm not going to. Oh. What about putting them to sleep, then? That should calm them down. Really? Works for humans, doesn't it? I have heard that the fruit of a certain plant has an intoxicating effect on insects. You can barely keep them away. <laughs> or awake. Which plant? No idea. They're not really my thing. Keep your head in the clouds. I should see if Bort has any insight to offer about this intoxicating plant. Hey, Dark. Cray was here a short while ago. He didn't look very happy. Something about you not keeping your word. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, just a little misunderstanding. Whoops. I know the plant Jonas was referring to. There's a tingleberry bush growing in the woodland just outside of town. The berries, when dried and crushed, release an intoxicating aroma. Heating the powder in an incense burner will increase its potency. This should be quite effective against the wasps. Where am I supposed to find an incense burner? 
Seems like the sort of knick-knack the giftless would take an interest in. Are you sure this will work? I saw ants swarming all over the tingleberries. They weren't affected. Technically, ingesting enough should knock any creature out cold. Insects, however, aren't known for their large appetites. Besides, have you ever tried force-feeding a wasp? Point taken. You'll have to smoke them out. Have you a cut, burn, or abrasion? Bandage it up, so others need not look at your wound. This I sell, and more. I noticed you have an incense burner. Is it for sale? Uh, that depends. It is of immense sentimental value. How much? If you were prepared to risk your life for me, we might be able to come to a deal. If not... You would find the deal less palatable. I'm listening. When I first arrived, traveling through the northern wastelands, I was accosted by bandits. Fortunately, I managed to conceal my most valuable belongings. If you were to retrieve them... Where are they exactly? Ah, the mind and the eye seldom agree. You don't remember? I recall a deep ravine, a lifeless shrub, and the brittle remains of a beast and its master. My belongings lie in the vicinity of those. Here, this map may aid you. I'll see what I can do. Should you have any bones to spare, I could use them to make charms. For luck, you understand. You would have my gratitude, as undying as the walking dead that comprised them, as well as a humble payment. Please accept eight gold coins for your effort. I have need of new blades for hunting. If you encounter any bandits in your wanderings, see if they can be parted from theirs. Wasteland burrower's teeth are said to contain a protein that increases crop yield when ground into a fine powder and used as fertilizer. If you make some for me, your purse will be all the heavier for your effort. You know, Pug, there's something about this lad. He doesn't smell? No, that's not it. He has an air about him, like he knows he's meant for something better. You mean like you often say when you're... Shut up, Pug. Say, friend, would you care to do us a favor? We could use someone with your obvious talents. Well... He has generosity, friend. I'll tell you who has none. Hamfed. Sir Hamfed? You know him? Only by name. Do you also know he owns most of the peasants' quarter? One man with so much, with a hold on so many. It's not right. Not right at all. But Lord Maguile... Maguile doesn't care what his favourite few get up to, nor how his own citizens are treated under them. No, someone should cut that Hamfed down to size. Cut him in half. Not literally, Pug. Tell you what, boy. If you're interested in a job that would right a few wrongs, me is just outside of town.
here he is. I can see that, Pug. What is this about? Justice. I don't understand. Then I shall explain. Pug? Huh? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hamfed heard about Finn's expert skill in demon steel and challenged him to a game a while back. He lost, but not before betting the biggest, bluest stone you've ever seen. Size of my fist, it was. He refused to give it up, though, and with the smug grin went on his merry way. Uh, how was that? Surprisingly flawless. Point is, that stone belongs to me. Us! Whatever. Think of the benefit to the town. That much money circulating through it. Even so, I don't see how stealing this stone from Sir Hamfed will make things right. It's still breaking the law. Let me tell you something about the likes of Hamfed and Beguile. There's a law for them and a law for us. Make no mistake. I don't expect you to understand. We're not born favoured or a mage. You're on your own. We do what we have to do to protect ourselves. Hmm. Well, what do you say? All right. I'll do it. Excellent. Now, if you head into the woodlands away, you come across a stream. Behind some nearby foliage, the river deviates and supplies water to the favoured quarter through a drain. Follow it back until you come to the fourth opening. It should lead directly into Hanford's backyard. He keeps what's owed to me in that mansion. I can see why you're not doing this yourself. I sent Pug, but... The hook landed on the balcony, right where it was supposed to. Pity the entire rope went with it. I forgot to hold on to the end. My informant, a servant of Hanford, assured me he has learned the combination and has managed to record it somewhere near his master's safe. I would have him steal the stone himself, but he's a little too green in my opinion. I've arranged for him to keep Hamfed away long enough for you to do what you need to do. Look, boy, it'll be worth your time. I promise you, good luck. Don't forget the big blue stone. Yes, Pug, he knows that. Varner was right. Perhaps the mage's tower is training thieves. These weeds look susceptible to frost. Ugh. I hope I don't regret this. That was unpleasant. It isn't far. The base of the mountains. This had better be worth my time. Valuable items, you say? What sort? All the kinds you can imagine. I already own most of them. There are those and more. Here, I brought your looking glass. Hurry it up, then. The house seems empty. That's handy. Congratulations, Dark. You've officially broken the law. If my mentor could see me now. Though, knowing Shireen, she already has. In any case, I'll have time to feel bad about it later. Now, where can I find this safe combination code that Fen spoke of? I admire and enjoy the company of all fish, but there's something about this one, colorful though it is, which might prove the exception. Even advanced water mages would have a hard time catching a fish by hand. I should not...
Only the master of the house has the right to do that. Sir Hamfed's greatest love, I presume. I should disturb as little as possible. I should dis... Not a chance. It's locked and heavily barred from within. Why do I need that? If I need them, it looks like a miniature net. Why do if I need even advanced, it appears I don't have time to talk to a fish. I can't access. There's nothing inside. I hope the blue stone wasn't kept here. It used to be. It appeared. Did you say something? Maybe. Got anything to eat? Like what? Well, let's see. I'm a stunningly expensive, equally attractive fish. To say I'm a good catch is an understatement. Are you baiting me? Not at all. But now that you mention bait, how about something with a bit of body to go with my gourmet fish flakes? Why do I... If I need... If I... If... Do I look bland to you? Why would I want some ungarnished worm? Where'd it come from, an apple? Spice up Mr. Shrivel there with something to stimulate my highly refined palate and be quick about it. I'm starving. That would only put the worm to sleep. These two... That should make the worm more to His Excellency's liking. I have already done that. I can't use... Mmm, at last! Took you long enough. Would you believe that lousy thieving kid forgot to feed me again this morning? Ahem, <clears throat> you were saying? The safe has already been cleared recently by that treacherous servant. Not that there was much inside. Just a map of the northern wastelands. The blue stone is kept elsewhere. The master of this dry old house was smart enough not to leave such a valuable possession in so obvious a hiding place. He knows who's trustworthy here, so he did what any wealthy, sensible land mammal would do. Moved it. I hope that treacherous little snitch gets what's coming to him. Where is the blue stone? You're looking at it. See that model treasure chest at one end of my tank? Have a guess what's in it. Don't mind me, little fish. I just want to get at that... Ow! Why did you bite me? How did you bite me? It's not polite to take from others without asking. Since you're a thief, that would be news to you. As to your second question, I am not your average decorative pet. Behold, the fierce four-fanged fist fish from the Fire Freeze Fjord of Fricazzo! I should have known. But you didn't. Listen, 
I really need to get into that chest. Forget it! I'm the guardfish around here, and I say you're not coming near it! But... Make yourself useful and find me some dessert! I don't have time to pander to his every whim. I need him out of the way. You can't do this to me! I'm the fierce four-fanged fist fish from... Oh. The Fire Freeze Fjord of Fricarzo. I know. This is so unfair. Got the blue stone. I need to get out of here before Sir Hamfed returns. I'll put this little guy back first. So, will you meet him, Finn? Shh! Not so loud! But will you? I'll consider it. He did it! I can see that, Pug. That'll teach Ham Fed for hoarding his wealth. I thought you said he lost it in a fair game of Demon's Deal. <clears throat> did I? Uh, never mind that. As promised, here is your reward. Fifty gold. Nothing to sneeze at. Well, it's not much to sneeze at. Shut up, pug. I think the gemstone is worth more than what you're offering. Is that so? What do you say to that, pug? Looks pretty valuable to me. Pug? Oh, fine. Here's double. Thank you. Pleasure was all yours. In addendum to the previous decrees of the day, it is hereby unlawful to be wearing the same colors as your most generous and compassionate lordship. A fashion faux pas tax will be levied upon the offending party, the resulting proceeds of which will be used to expand further the necessarily diverse range of your lord's garments. Again, I bid you good day. The house... In any... Why do I... This... Behold! I don't... I need... 
There's no fi- I don't- I can steddle. I thought you said he <clears throat> fifth. Well, it's not shut up. The truth now, Fend. Did Sir Hamfed really owe you this gemstone? Come now. Let's not spoil the occasion with trivialities. Even when they make all the difference? Pug! So I embellished a little. You still agreed to steal the thing? That makes you a thief. Not if I put it back. You wouldn't dare. Try me. Oh, fine. What do you want? I have made my decision. The stone is going back. You will regret this! I already am. But at least my conscience will be clear. Curse you and your conscience! That's what you said about yours once. Shut up, Pug! There is a guard patrolling beyond the gate. I'd better time this carefully. I'll need to move closer. So, the thief returns to the scene of the crime! I can't just drop the blue stone in. It needs to be carefully placed back inside the model treasure chest with the lid closed. Ow! I'm trying to put the stone back! And I'm trying to- I'll have to try something else. Hey! That fish ripped the scoop out of my hand! There's a big hole in the side. It's useless now. Didn't think I'd fall for that one again, did you? It's a good idea, but the powder would only dissolve by itself before he could eat it. Maybe I can mix it into something. I'll take some fish flakes and add just a pinch of tingleberry powder. I have no... I have some dessert for you, Mr. Fistfish. Great! Drop it in my tank! Right over there! He's going for it. Gobbling it up? Ah, he's sleeping like a... fish. There. Nobody will ever know it was missing. Time to get out of here. I'd better remove the rope and hook on the way out. Thank you for answering my summons, Doc. Do you know why I sent for you? Shireen told you what I've been up to? Do not sound so concerned. I have been observing you through my own means. It takes much to murk my vision. Though it was regrettable that you chose to enter the house of another uninvited, and to take what was not yours, you behaved responsibly by returning the stone. I... I'm sorry. Humility is the first step toward facing your faults. The next is to correct them, if you can. The course of a small stream can be altered with effort. A river is much harder. Do you understand? Yes, Master of Stream. It pleases me that your mentor's faith in you was well placed. To acknowledge this, I wanted to give you something.
It's a sapphire crystal. In the hands of one trained in the water arts, this will enhance the bearer's power. You will agree, I think, that this holds far greater value than any stone or coin. Use it well. Thank you, Master Estream. May your troubles flow past swiftly, Dark. This looks like the area Sea Long described. True to his word, Sea Long's valuables are stashed here. do you prove your worth here is the incense burner thank you that which is loaned is best returned i promise to give it back when i'm done a promise seeks always a companion indeed they say ma what happened to your poster vandalism Cirrus Tabin and I were discussing the incoming trade tariffs. The next thing I know, someone had come along and torn it. There's no respect for anything anymore. I blame Megail. For a ripped poster? Why not? That reminds me. I found the strangest thing. Whoever defaced the poster dropped some sort of grooming item. Only it wasn't like anything I've ever seen. It had the handle of a comb, but in place of the teeth, it was curved like a beak. Might be useful if you had feathers, I suppose. Do you still have this feather comb? I do, but... Go on. I hate to ask, but times are tough. What with our lord raising the taxes for the fourth time this year, I was going to sell it to Si Long. Are you sure there's nothing I could do to change your mind? Well... I was deeply saddened when I saw what someone had done to the likeness of my valued customer. I mean, this good person. If you could find a way to repair the poster with the missing pieces, that would be a service beyond measure. I don't meet.
I... The incense burner is now lit. I'm already... The wasps are back inside their hive. If Bort was right, they should be subdued. I'll still need a way to remove them. I can't use... I've captured the wasps in a flask. Now that I have removed those bothersome wasps for good, I think the eagles will let me pass. me leave me be hold still i need to see your wound it is my leg human i do not need Ugh. his leg isn't broken but it's badly burned and there's a sharp rock fragment embedded in the wound i'll need to do something Drink this. It should ease the pain enough to help you walk. We just have to attend to the wound first. You had better be careful, human. Ugh. Thank you, human. I've bound his leg as best I can. Come on, up you get. I am dark, by the way. Falk, why are you helping me? I could not leave you to suffer. Your human friends thought otherwise. What happened? I was flying over the town. I know I am not meant to, but... I like seeing it up close. As I passed over your lord's home, flame engulfed my leg and caught my wing. Flame? From an arrow? It must have been. I made it as far as the pass and landed here. I may never fly again. There is no greater shame for my people. If you permit me, Falk, I will return with you to your valley. I need to speak with your leader. He might be less hostile if you are with me. As you have helped me, that seems only fair. I will call for Chief Hawkane at the entrance. You say the humans targeted you, Falk? The Lord's own guards? I saw only the direction the flame came from. The largest ground perch. Beguile's home, I think. A moment later, it struck my leg and scorched my wing. This is most serious. The worst incident since these troubles began. Sorry to interrupt, Chief Hawkane, but to what troubles do you refer? You will do well to remember that a human's place is second among Flyterians, less when he is trespassing. He helped me, Father. Indeed. That is why he still lives. Father? Ask your questions, human. 
but be quick. You mentioned troubles. Maybe I can help. I think not. Our relations with the humans are strained of late, and this season's envoys have not yet arrived. In addition, we have spied the Lord's own citizens entering the forest, where no human should dare tread. If Megyle is conspiring with the forest folk, as I suspect, and humans have formed such an impure alliance, we would have no choice but to cleanse this land of their tainted blood. More recent and pressing are the thefts committed against our own citizens. Only your kind would possess such frivolous items as those left in our perches. Have you searched your city for the missing property? Why would we? The perpetrators are obvious. I would like to see these perches for myself. You suggest we are capable of a ground dweller's dishonesty? That insult alone hardens my resolve. No human shall again pass beyond this. I will allow him, father. What is this? You cannot- Is it not our law that any Flytarian, chief son or no, may grant outsiders passage through our territory? It is so, but know that you would be responsible for this human, Falk. Were he to abuse your trust, your life would be forfeit. I could do nothing to change that. I understand. Very well. You may see these perches, human, once you have shown respect and paid tribute. But remember, should your actions compromise my son, you will suffer by my own talons. Yours would be the first blood in a war that now seems unavoidable. Sperrin, take Falk home. Condur, you shall escort the human around our city. Be vigilant at all times. Welcome to the city of Flyteria. Can you take me to Falk's perch? All right, hold on. Hello again. I didn't thank you properly before. Please know I am grateful for your aid. I'm glad I could help. Tell me, is there any way to see your father? As an outsider, you will not be able to visit my father's perch without an offering of some kind. Humans are known for their tools and crafts, at least the ones you are permitted to use. Perhaps you could make something for him. I tried to make one for my father, but I am unfamiliar with the strange object in the center. You mean the wheel? Wheel? Never mind. Do you mind if I take this block of wood? Go ahead. I wasn't sure how to finish it anyway. When you asked my father whether he had searched for the stolen property, I wondered how humans could get around unseen, unless they were mages. Drop by again. Can you take me down to ground level? This scrap looks like it came from the poster in town. How did it get all the way over this side of the valley?
I'm sure Falk will not mind. This wheel looks broken. May I have it? You wouldn't take a girl's wheel without compensation, right? What did you have in mind? Make me an offer. That seems a fair trade. If you can find... I can't attach them direct. The feathers. The wheel. I can't. Good blacksmith. Might you attach this wooden wheel and metal pole so that the wheel spins freely at one end? Hmm. <laughs> I think he's waiting for me to hand over the items and pay. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? Mm. Thank you, blacksmith. a fine gift. Are those my feathers? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Do not be. My father will want to know you had my blessing to use them. Hold it still while I scratch my mark into the wood. There. My father should approve now. You may enter and present your gift. An insightful gift. My son listens well to his father's tales. What do you call this? A windmill. Windmill. Ah. <sighs> Falk is as I was in my youth. Too much so, I think. But the past is dead, as are those who were taken from us. Only the future matters. My people will survive in spite of human and forest folk treachery. The sea. Now is an excellent time. As you can see, the evidence held to the light casts the darkest shadow over our human neighbors. What does it matter what was stolen? That these thefts happened at all is the most pertinent fact. If you must know, they were grooming implements, adornments, small things of that nature. The thefts occurred in separate locations. Condor can take you to those perches. Go ahead. Observe the items if you must. You will reach the same conclusion. Humans have been among us, uninvited, bringing nothing but ill intent. Now is... As... Go... Two items of value only to humans were discovered in separate perches. Nearby was evidence of further transgression. A leather gauntlet with brass buckles and silver studs made for a smallish hand. The owner was evidently a smoker, and I don't think the Flytarians have taken up such vices yet. The mouthpiece is made of brass.
Can you take me to the perch where the smoking pipe was found? Can you take me to the perch where the studded gauntlet was found? The Flytarians are not vegetarians. These scraps of fruit must have come from produce outside of the valley. Fruit scraps in the Flytarian village? From my stall, you say? Yes, they were spread across the floor at the scene of a theft. I am short a few apples and a banana, but I'd wager it was those children who like playing nearby. They're certainly fast. May I take a closer look? They went missing from the crate behind me. The fruit scraps in the Flytarian perch likely came from here. Might this brass button have come from the Flytarian village somehow? I should ask around. I found this on the ground nearby. Did you notice who dropped it? Let me see that. Ah, that's the insignia of Ignor. Anyone enacting official duty on behalf of Lord Magail wears a uniform adorned with identical buttons. Do such important people grace your stall with their presence? Every day. Why do you ask? I'm investigating a theft. I had no idea mages concerned themselves with the trivialities of us lesser folk. They don't. These thefts occurred in the Flytarian village, possibly by lesser folk, as you say. Do you know who might have dropped this particular button? Oh, well, <laughs> nobody comes to mind, I'm sorry to say. Then again, I've never paid close attention to those of the favored quarter. No sense feeding one's envy. If there's a connection between the displaced fruit and button, I may find it in the Flytarian Valley. Strange. I've seen something like that in my cousin's perch. Pekon found it there two days ago. We thought it might be a coin of some sort from your town. You didn't mention this to your father? It did not seem important. I mean, nothing was stolen. I should take a look anyway. Can you direct me to your cousin's perch? Of course. It is on the western side of the valley. Pekon is visiting the Sharpstone Mountains today, but I can permit you entry. Ask Condor. He knows the way. These breadcrumbs may have come from the market quarter, just as the fruit scraps did. Thank you. It's heartening to find that there are still decent folk left in the world. I think that's worth more than coin. I've no idea how valuable this feather comb is. Still, it's yours if you want it.
My candle is now burning. Can you take me? Where did you find that? In Ignor's market quarter. That's more than a little odd. I recognize the markings on the handle. They belong to the Widow Parla, but she's been sequestered in mourning for the past month. I imagine you still wish to visit her perch, though. You imagine correctly. Condor can fly you there. Can you take me to the perch of the Widow Parla? Where are you, my darling? I wait for you. There you are. What have you brought for me today? Oh, thank you. I know you love me, but you must stop bringing me these trinkets. Where do you get them from? It is not safe, my darling, especially not now. I would never tell anyone it was you. It will always be our secret. We are good at keeping secrets, are we not? No one will ever know who you really are. Follow that magpie. The magpie flew to an outcropping in the mountains. The smell of the area prevented me from investigating further. I can take you there, if you like. Can you take me to the outcropping? According to Condor, the stench from within the cave is too strong for him. Funny, I can't smell anything. I can't.
What is this? A conductor? It's like mine, only it has a stylized symbol on it. Two half circles slid apart along a dividing line. This envoy wears a single gauntlet, matching the one I saw in Hawking's perch. The dead envoy's clothing is ripped to shreds. Two missing brass buttons have been torn from his doublet. I have found out all I can. I need to see Hawking. You have shown perseverance in your search for the truth. Most surprising for a human. You have also brought proof that these thefts were but the acts of a mere magpie and its misguided caretaker. Guard, bring her in. You summoned me, noble Hawkane. Your magpie is responsible for the recent plight surrounding our missing property. Failure to disclose this almost edged us into war. My darling is innocent. I know him better than you know your own son. Claw carefully, Parla. While every soul of flight may expect our care, your pet is just that, and no more than a scavenger. You will not speak about my husband that way! Your husband, Parla. Your husband is dead. Like my wife. While we both feel their loss still, there is no returning from the higher world. But he has come back to me! I knew it the day he died, when I first saw my beloved in his new form. <sighs> we have heard enough. Guard. Return her to her perch, and keep watch lest her pet return to cause more mischief. Do not hurt my darling! He must not be kept from me! It appears you were right, and that my son's trust was well placed. Falk grows quickly. Something I have overlooked in seasons past. He has coped with the dishonor dealt him better than I could have expected. He will succeed you admirably when his day comes. No small impairment can change that. I will tell him you said so. Perhaps I have been too hasty to judge the humans we have protected so long. The discovery of the envoys changes everything. Their disappearance was clearly not my people's doing, though some in Iganor may believe otherwise. Yet I do not comprehend why humans would kill their own in such a manner. I don't believe the assault on Falk was motivated by mislaid revenge, yet I am sure it is related somehow to the envoy's demise. A lot of trouble has been taken to break your long-held alliance. It almost succeeded. The nature of their deaths also disturbs me. For reasons, with your forgiveness, I do not wish to discuss. I promise you, Chief Hawkane, to find out all I can as soon as my remaining tasks are completed. Once initiated, I will have greater authority to investigate on your behalf. I would be grateful for that. Is there anything I can do to expedite proceedings? Yes. My master sent me to collect a single griffin's egg. 
Can you help me? Hmm. I can tell you where to find the griffins. They nest in the mountains west of here, and are difficult creatures to approach, let alone take something from. Avoid detection when approaching the nests. Conceal yourself whenever possible. If you should be seen, you can expect an aggressive response. Act as some of our lesser kindred. Duck. Also, know that harming them or their unhatched young would do great dishonor to my people. If you are ready, my guard will take you to the griffins' nests. Farewell. Goodbye, Chief Hawkeen, and thank you. One last thing, human. These eyes see more than your kind could ever hope to behold, and see more still when they look upon yours. Hunger is a trait common upon many, for what one wants and cannot have. Be wary of such desires. As we say, to prey upon more than a talon's share is to lose sight of one's horizon. Thank you, Chief Hawkeen. Guard, I believe this belongs to Parla. Thank you, human. I will see that it is returned to her. Can you take me to the Griffin nesting grounds? Meet me on the Western Plateau once you have the egg. A I could try to discover where this stylized conductor came from. The training hall would be a good start. Or I could just get on with my trials. You have succeeded a second time, Initiate Dark. It is evident that your mentor's faith was not misplaced. Your compassion and diplomacy will hold you in good stead with the Flytarians for many years to come. The Griffin's egg, as precious and sacred as that which Mother did, will be returned to its keepers at the conclusion of your trial. Care for it well. It is time to look to the forest where your most difficult and dangerous task lies waiting. Let your element guide you. I came like you asked, Pug. What is this all about? I, uh, wanted to introduce you. This is... Names are not important at this time. Please, sir, sit. Have a drink. What is this, then? Want to know how real men have a good time? Ah! 
the ale's boiling. Oh, so it is. Let me pour you another. A good time, you say? I would think you've more pressing priorities. Such a regrettable history deserves recompense. Do you not think? What do you know about me? Only what your friend Pug here has said. Pug? He wants to help. Yeah? How? You are an opportunistic man, Fen. One who has lost much to the likes of Igonor's Lord. As you seek in vain to recover a life taken from you, a gambler in you senses his chance. Change rises like smoke from a smoldering ruin. Tell me, how much would you risk for a change, say, of occupancy in the Lord's Mansion? Ha! Talk is fine, but it makes no difference. The King chooses his Lords. Such choices can be reneged, especially when said lords become unpopular. Have you not heard of the rumors? About Maguile making friends with those forest cretins? Sounds like something he'd do. Risk his people's lives by letting those things in town, just to get hold of whatever they've got stashed away. Greed is among your kind's greatest traits. And I hear he's planning to sever ties with the mountain folk. Who will protect us, then? Not you mages, that's for sure. Ah, but like yourself, I have a greater interest. Revolution. What's in it for you? Let us say, personal satisfaction. Accept this as a show of good faith. We have a deal in the interest of change. That's a lot of change. Sure, why not? It's getting late, and I still need to collect that trinicorn horn from the forest and return to the tower before sunrise. Time to revisit the Sphere of Knowledge. Dark, I hear you have completed the second of your trials. Congratulations. Thank you. Master your element. Use your gifts in the hall most sparse. Reveal the scroll. While everything could be a little cooler, I have to draw the line somewhere. There's another scroll inside the box. Apparently this hall has a function after all. Receive your power.
made it through the second round? I'll have to change my bets. What? I'm joking, Dark. Of course you are. I feel I should hang on to this. Not enough, not enough. Not enough. Get away! The Grumps will get me! Grumps? Or... Or... Something. Help! Hey! Come back here with that egg! I need that! Seeker of power, your deeds have proven you worthy. All knowledge contained within this sphere is now yours. You will become the... Just get on with it! Receive your power. I am... I... am... You were Shoot! the mightiest of mages. But why not use a trinacorn? Their blood is much richer for cat dying. Because you fool, we slaughtered the last of them yesterday. Besides, I need human blood to commune with the lower world. There are only so many peasants Megayo can send me before the townspeople start asking questions. 
What happens if the you know who agreed? Then you skull rot, everything we've been promised will be ours. What about a promise to the fat human? The town's lord? We can go back on that later. Remember to bring out the human when I'm ready. I need time to properly attune myself. That sounds difficult. For you, thinking past the next meal is difficult. Now don't let me down. Yes, boss. While everything... There's nothing worth concealing there. While every... All things considered, this might have been a lucky turn. If a trinicorn wandered too close to the camp, there's a good chance I'll find its horn somewhere around here. Better take a look. I should also try to find my belongings while I'm at it. That should stop the creaking. Success! The lock has yielded. This looks like the master key. The cabinet houses a small ruby brooch. It reminds me of the one that Cray saw. Here are my belongings. Looks like the stylized conductor is missing. I really hope I won't get in trouble for losing it. I'd best focus on my final task. Looks like a rotting carcass has been covered by a mound of compost. Here lies the last of the trinicorns. 
Its horn is intact. Sharp times three. Now I just need to get back to the hallowed hall by sunrise. Sounds like I'm being missed. Time to get out of here. Here goes nothing. Even now, the forest goblins remain unchecked. And why? Because our Lord knows fear will make you pay every last coin for his protection. I say we remove that miser from his manor and replace him with someone who cares for the people of this town. But you said you only cared about... Shut up, Pug. I know I have not lived amongst you long, but I see the pain in your eyes, the hardships you endure. I know them well. It's true I've strayed more than any of you could imagine, never knowing a home or purpose. But here, in Iganor, I have found both. Maguile, who takes all and gives back naught, cares nothing for you, but I do. What about your new friend? He's a mage. They don't help us. Is that the help you're looking for? Who's had enough of this so-called lord, putting his own pockets before the welfare of your loved ones? Yeah! Who thinks Iganor deserves a new lord? Yeah! Who will help me become that lord? I think it's fair to say I'm lost. Not again. We apologize for dragging you here, literally. But we couldn't be sure of your intentions. What you've told us confirms our suspicions. The Red Caps are planning to abandon the forest and live in the town as humans. Good riddance, you might say, but that will not be the end of it. Mark my words, they will return with their human slaves to wipe us out. Or worse, make us wear their red caps again! <coughs> we will not let them! He will help us! <coughs> Child, you will return to the red cap camp and stop Straw from raising the lower world inhabitants. Me? Why? Two reasons. One, we're holding this nice egg and horn until you return. Two, it would be bad for everyone, human or goblin, if that dolt manages to summon anything from down there. And three, I wasn't going to mention the wars, but it's about time the mages made up for what happened to us. So, if you are planning to leave this forest with your possessions, want a town to go back to, and care about righting more than a few wrongs, you will do exactly what we say. Anything else? No, that was all. Then listen up. 
none of us can go as we would be recognized, so we will send you back disguised as a goblin. A little trick we picked up from a mage who wandered into our camp a few years ago. He wanted a green cap for an initiation or some such. Luckily for him, we only dip ours in leaf juice. Take this and drink up. You look better already. Now listen, you won't be able to cast your human spells in goblin form. Besides, you'd just look silly. We'd also appreciate it if you could bring Stroff back with you. He has some serious re-education awaiting him. Well, off you go then. Um, one thing. How am I supposed to stop Stroff from raising anything from the lower world? Ha! How humans have managed to get this far, I will never know. Improvise, of course. Getting hold of Stroff's summoning book would help, too. See you, if you get back. You mean, when? Sure I do. Goodbye. Wait, I do not know you. You must be the new chef. What's your name? Uh, Jonas. Good. We were wondering when you were going to arrive. Stroth has been waiting for his new chef forever. So, can I see your leader? He's busy getting ready to, uh, uh commune with our friends. You know the ones. Down there. I thought you needed human blood for that. Hey, you are smart. Our last supply got away, but we found some more wandering about near here. Must have been lost. If you wait a little while, you might get to see them. Have you seen them before? Yeah. I try not to look, though. Stroth is braver than I am. He wants them to stay above ground with us. Do they want to stay above ground? Not sure. Stroth says they'll come up for good if they can trust us. So, we're not allowed to make any commotion. But you don't have much time. Stroth wants a recipe made. It's for the summoning after party. I was supposed to prepare it, but, um... What? I can't read good. I'll see what I can do. Go to the cooking hut. You should find everything you need. Okay, time to prepare a red cap dish. How hard could it be? There, one awful smelling meal, unfit for human consumption. Hopefully I've earned my goblin stripes now. You idiot! 
idiot. I told you not to skimp on the candles. I couldn't find any more. I don't want excuses. Either find two more candles for the pentagram, or I'll stick wicks in your thumbs instead. What's the problem? I've looked everywhere in a camp. There aren't any more spare candles. Drop will have my thumbs. Can you find me some? Where should I look? Try to human town. If you're quick, they won't see you. And if they do? Then Straff won't get his candles. We can't have that. When you have them, place them on that pointy thing. Why? I'd better return to the Red Cap camp with these. I am ready. Have all the Red Caps assemble. Okay, boss. Hear me, O oh mighty ones of the lower world. Enter this horrid, glaring realm of humans and spread your darkness across their land. We wait for you, O oh magnificent shades of the lower world. Join us, so together we may conquer, pillage, and so forth. If this is a bad time, O oh fearsome denizens of the lower world, then show us a sign, and we will call upon you again tomorrow. Maybe they're not in. Shut up! I'm trying to... I feel strange. I think the tonic is wearing off. Melat Sepogaraka! Time to make myself scarce. That was lucky. I need to stop the ritual. If I could just get Stroff to drop that summoning book. That is not a good place. That spell won't help to dislodge. 
water might damage the book. Not enough. Not an not not Dark. The priestess. You have found the tome. It is time to receive your power. Stand upon the most magical of signs. I don't understand. You promised... Power. It stands before you. For sparing me, I will give you what you desire. Complete the summoning. Draw me from my prison, as you draw water into your body. How? I am bound to the dagger you still carry. Through it we may speak. The blade serves as a conduit, linking us in our locations. Place it upon the most magical of signs, but do not leave the circle. The dagger just shattered. What are you doing? It is not worth it. To unleash someone as treacherous as you upon the world. You stupid child! No! I knew I should have locked the door. It's over, Stroff. Yes, yes, you won. I get it. What do you want? You will accompany me back to the Green Cap Camp. They put you up to this? I might have known. This has their sticky, stinking leaf juice all over it. Will you come? Or do I have to make you? Ugh, fine. After you. So good to have you back with us, Stroff. <laughs> you have our gratitude for bringing him to us. With the summoning book out of Stroff's greedy hands. Hey! He will be unable to raise anything anytime soon. Good job. Yeah, brilliant. Looks like a page is missing. Don't look at me. The book was already falling apart when I got it. Which raises a valid point. Why would a human like Miguel send Stroff a book on how to summon demons? Where would he even get something like that? Well, Straw? How would I know? I didn't ask. Besides, I only dealt with his messenger. And you simply trusted this human? We had a deal. He'd give me the book, and in exchange, I'd let him command a few demons. Command? The Giftless couldn't hope to control a demon. They can't even speak their language. Straw, this messenger, what did he look like? As if I'd notice. You humans all smell the same. Stroff. Fine. <sighs> Tall, thin, beard, wore a gold mask and hood. Had one of those brass knuckle protectors like this kid does. Oh no. What is it? I may know who gave Stroff the summoning book, but I am hoping my intuition is misplaced. If you have no objection, I would like to keep the tome. 
It may prove useful. Very well. Brave human, you may have your belongings back. And the summoning book. Oh, and take these potions. Your magical friend left them behind. We prefer our own natural tonics. Yours give us a rash. As an extra token of our thanks, allow me to present you with this ancient mystical emerald. Apparently you mages go nuts for these things. Thank you. Don't mention it. We've got a whole box of them we're trying to get rid of. When you are ready, you have but to exit our camp and you shall find yourself in a familiar part of the forest. Tell me, what will become of Stroth? He will be treated well, I assure you. We have great plans for his re-education. The di- well... Ah, hello, Dart. Finished your three tasks? Yes. I am ready to be initiated. The Masters and all the other mages have retired for the night. Looks like your ceremony will have to wait till tomorrow morning. Oh. Why are you still awake? You know me, nocturnal tendencies. Besides, there are less distractions at night. It means I can get more reading done. I should have known. I need to know if this book came from the reading hall. Summoning, yes, I know it. There's only one way to take a book from here, and that's to borrow it. A protection spell of my own design. Not that you would know about the lending rules. You read enough for both of us. Can you tell me who borrowed it? I will have to look it up. Got it. How do you do that? I attune myself to the record stored in the archive hall. It's like having a massive index inside your head. Care to try? Uh, no thank you. So, who borrowed it? It was Varner. Why? Is it important? Do you know where he is? It is getting late, but he might still be in the training hall. If you're lucky. He isn't here. I can't wait until tomorrow. I need to speak to Varner tonight. Hear him explain how this is all a misunderstanding. I'm going to need help locating him. I just have to convince Bort. Bort? 
It is vital that I see Varner. Tonight. May I ask what this is about? Uh, I, I don't... It's difficult to... Dark, what's the matter? It's only circumstantial, I know, but... Go on. I believe Varner may be responsible for assaulting a Flytarian, two near attacks on Ignor, and at least three giftless deaths. What? Are you sure? Elements guide us. Your... your reluctance to accept this is understandable. I mean, Varner? I know, but I can't ignore the signs when they all point in the same direction. I have to see him, hear the truth in his own words. Can you help me? Well, I would lend you my finer amulet, but if you recall, it doesn't work. I'd need a special emerald from... I might be able to help with that. Here. That's fantastic! Only one problem. The emerald will need to be fitted properly, and it's fiddly work, to say the least. How long? Not sure. I'll have to check the installation instructions, dig up the tools from my private hall, and then research the right words to activate it. I can't wait around for Bort to fix it. There has to be another way to locate Varner. Is there any way to find out the combination to a private hall? Only if the person assigned to it tells you. There are very strict rules about- Bort? <sighs> if you're asking me whether I know Varner's combination, I don't. What I do know is that most mages choose their own private hall combinations, so it's a question of knowing Varner well enough to- Guess? That's not helpful, Bort. Maybe not. Ah, but this might be. Check the bookshelves. What for? The title Varner borrowed four days ago. How is that supposed to... Wait, isn't that when all the combinations were changed? It was. I know it's a stretch, but I distinctly recall Varner paying close attention to the spine. This is... I hope there's something in here that will disprove my theory. Where are you, Varner? What's this? A diary? Did Varner drop it? Varner must have written this a long time ago. This part of the journal consists of many similar entries. I'll skip ahead a bit. Elements guide us! The journal's covered in blood. I'll leave it here. I have no wish to become a member of Varner's little club. The pendant has a unique design, which matches the markings on Varner's conductor. There can't be too many like it. One of the witnesses is Phileum, Varner's rival candidate to become the next Firemaster. That can't be a coincidence. Or can it? I'm loath to dismiss any lead, but I'm running out of time. From this elevation, I can see a large number of people amassing in the favored quarter. I'd better take a close... I see something. A crowd. 
assembled at the gates of Lord Maguile's manor. And what's this? Fend is standing in front of them giving a speech. There's a hooded figure nearby. Varner. This tower has no alarm system like some of the newer ones. There's no time to work out the combination to every hall. I must stop whatever is transpiring alone. It is time, my fellow citizens, to end the rule of this treacherous and misguided fiend who calls himself our Lord. Lord MacGyle. Yes, Pug, they know that. Can I count on you, friends, to help me this night? <laughs> then let us begin. The lock, mage, if you please. Follow me! And me! I have to get to Lord Maguile before... Well, well, of all the mages I considered a potential problem, you never made the list. Varner, you have to stop this! Varner? I suppose the ruse was effective. Who are you? Pyres? I don't... Understand? Let me help you. Imagine being born so immeasurably gifted that you incinerate your entire family at the age of four. Now imagine how that felt. All that power, that purpose. Then, to grow up revered, even feared, with the greatest expectations placed upon you, only to fall short of them all, peaking as master of this insignificant province. And finally, to realize that no one, not a soul, will remember that boy, that child who tasted power beyond reckoning, who knew his name should last. This world is meant to burn, and I was meant to burn it. Varner would comprehend, were he conscious. What have you done with him? Where is he? Where he can do the most damage, as his element intended. I consider it his penance for interfering. Varner knew? Yes, though our confrontation was too rushed to learn how. Now come. I sense you wish to waste time asking me pointless questions. To ignite chaos, light as many fires as you can. Miguel's envoys set off on schedule. It was easy to arrange a meeting. Unfortunately, their absence lacked the reaction that I had hoped for. I should have known Miguel wouldn't care. I teleported all three to that cave without detection. You didn't have to kill them! What was I supposed to do? Keep them caged in the fauna hall? He confided in me long ago, and I learned of his full involvement in that errant rabble. His confession presented an opportunity. Hawkeyne would have led an all-out attack over a broken eggshell. His errant son was an irresistible target. It would have been short. The tower would have been forced to defend the town, with the fire mages on the front line. Can you imagine the sky raining so many feathers? Jonas might have even left his hall. It matters not how the torch touches Iganor, so long as it burns brightly enough for all to see. The glow will illuminate my name. While the townsfolk have passion, the guards are skilled. Hence my presence here. Enough prattle. I read your diary. Then you comprehend. 
This is my purpose, my destiny. I will live on for all time. You cannot be our fire master forever. Of course not, but I can be the last. They always remember the last. Pyres, the master who stood at the fall of Iganor. We both know this insurrection is doomed. When the king's army arrives, the dissidents will be quashed and our tower disbanded. Varna was to be blamed, but he has a greater purpose now. Curse you, Pyres! Where is Varner? Temper? I've got a better question. Do you have time to search for him and save your precious lord? Better still, will you live to do either? Bort! I got my finder amulet working. After you left, I asked it to show me Varner, and it led me into town. Then I heard the commotion and came here. Quickly, take it. If he's in danger, there's not much time. Find Varner. Remember, the faster it flashes, the nearer you are. Watch out! Not bad for a bookworm. Now go! The amulet is pulsating slowly here. I had better find Varner. Who knows how long Bort can hold out? As for Lord Maguile... The amulet is at its brightest here. Varner must be close. It's not locked. That's a first. I have no idea what this is. But I have a strong feeling I need to get rid of it now. Mm. Oh, my head. Dark. What is going on? Our fire master has gone mad and has set the townspeople against their lord. Now Bord is fighting him and... Pyres. Yes, I remember now. How did you find out? Jonas. He saw the Flytarian heir being shot down with fire, and managed to tell me before he got sidetracked. After several hours searching the records hall for absentees with no success, I noticed one of the entries had been altered. Difficult to spot. And only a master could make such a change. I arranged to meet Pyres. Our fire master tried to assure me that it was an error, but he could tell I was skeptical. You can guess what happened next. I must go to the Earth Mage's aid. Do what you can to stop the mob. The situation must be contained. What is it? I should have seen this. Water mages are supposed to possess a clarity to thwart deception. Yet neither Shireen nor Master Estreem were able to. You may not understand, given your nature, but there is good reason my element is considered the most dangerous. No one can know which way the blaze may burn. Not even those who are bound to it. Quickly now. We must hurry.
Hey, you! You're needed at the front gate! Uh, there's some riffraff causing trouble! Get a move on! I can't... Who are you? What are you doing here? My name is Dark, my lord. And I am here to... You're a mage! I didn't send for your motley lot. No, my lord. But I thought you would appreciate the help, seeing as there are a large number of your people downstairs who would like to have you thrown out. Literally. If you are referring to that rabble below, I assure you I am quite safe. My guards trained with the king's army. They are no strangers to quelling pithy insurrections. My lord, do you have any idea why they are coming for you? How the devil would I know? The peasantry are so fickle. One cannot keep track of every minuscule complaint. The price of beans one day, taxes the next, ale shortages, though I might sympathize with that one, thieves, disease, the weather. They think you have turned against the Flytarians and are in league with the Red Cap Goblins. Why in the lower world would they think that? Well, um, because the Fire Master has been spreading rumors to that effect. One of yours? What for? It's... complicated. Then I suggest you go out there and uncomplicate things. But surely you should... Go on! You came here to save me from a mess your lot started. At least lock the door. I will, but just to keep you from coming back in. That is a difficult man to care about. The guards are barring the mob at the main doors downstairs. Trained or not, even they cannot hold those numbers for long. There's MacGyle's room, Finn, at the top of the stairs! Yes, I can see that, Pug. Citizens of Iganor, you have to stop this madness! This is no business of yours, mage. Step aside! Lord Maguile is innocent of your accusations! You lie! All you have are rumors, fed to you by the Fire Master! And all you have is your word. I have been to the Flytarian City. They remain your allies and protectors. I have also been deep inside the forest. Its folk will not bother you anytime soon. Why should we believe you? Show us proof that you've been there. This is a griffin's egg. I would not have been able to obtain one without the Flytarian's permission. It is a sign of their friendship. That only proves you're in one of those places. Which still leaves one more. Yes, Pug. He knows that. This is the horn of a trinicorn, which the red cap goblins have hunted to extinction. That I stand before you with this is proof that they are in no position to attack you. This is a trick! He is conspiring with the Lord and his cohorts! Press on, my friends! He is only a boy! Do not let his puny spells stop you! Time for plan B! Bolt! That could have gone better. I hope Maguile's door holds out. 
Mine too, for that matter. I can't use combative magic. I'll have to think of something else, quickly. The chair has wedged under the handle. Nobody will be entering through the door, but I won't be leaving that way either. It's jammed, Fen. Forget about him. It's Maguile we're after. Get over here. That flimsy lock on the door to Maguile's bedchambers won't last long. Why have you returned? They are trying to break in. We need to block these doors from the inside. You do, you mean? That should do it. Just how am I supposed to sleep with that incessant pounding? Go and make it stop immediately. Expel that rabble from my house. I can't get back into the main hall. Here is the key to the ground floor. Well, don't just stand there. Come and take it. Now, for goodness sake, go. The stones, the wheel. I with the mob gone. This might be my best chance to deal with Fend and Pug. You said you could take care of the door yourself, Pug. You said that, but there's something heavy in the way. It's probably Maguile. For once in your life, be useful. Why did you have to send the mob away to ransack the Lord's office in town? They could have helped. Because this is my moment. When I toss that ponce out on his ear, I don't want a bunch of rowdy imbeciles spoiling it. Or making off with your future property. Shut up, Pug, and put your back into it. Hey, Pug, catch. Uh! I thought I smelled something. You seem to have lost your friend, Fend. I have lost more than you could ever know, boy. Keep it down out there. I'm trying to sleep. Tell me, do they teach you about pain in that tower of yours? About death? Whatever troubled past you've had, it doesn't justify this. Quiet! I've already asked you once. Have you watched your entire family fall to sickness while those with the power to help do nothing? Have you grown up alone, hungry, while the likes of McGuile enjoy their third helping? Have you gone a day in your life wanting for anything? They took me when I was six. You're really testing my patience. No apologies, no explanations, except to tell my family I was special, that I needed to be with my own kind. I would be treated well, better than if I had stayed, but I would not be allowed to see them again until I was initiated. That was ten years ago. I don't even know if they're still alive. And what? You think this makes us the same? I do know about pain, and uncertainty, and wanting what you can't have. 
I'm warning you, don't make me come out there. I'm supposed to believe any of that. It's up to you, Fend. Just don't tell me you're the only one who deserves his share. Or more. If you're not careful, you'll get... More than you bargained for. I thought I told you to... Who the devil is that? Now's not the time. I'll let him sleep it off. I've already broken in. I should probably refrain from breaking any more laws. That's the man who would be Lord. Lord? And what of the mob? Ransacking your town office, I believe. I'll have it sorted soon. You do that and clear that heaving lump off my balcony. Maybe now I can get some sleep. You've dealt with our revolutionaries, I see. Well done. A bunch of humans? Easy. Pyres? Bored to die. Ugh! Do continue, Varna. No? Then allow me. Both of your friends managed to lose me in the heat of battle. When the fools split up, I made my move. Now what? You'll kill all three of us? I don't see why not. You would murder a boy, Pyres. Have you no compassion? My dear Varna, always the idealist. I'm more of a practical man. In any case, my nature was decided long ago. You didn't mean for your family to die. It was an accident. You were only a child. The elements wish it. They wish for you to go on killing? They wish for me to survive, if only in name. No one will remember you, Pyres. You're just a common madman. History will swallow you whole. Fool! Speak for yourself. Sense the hunger within you. You've dreamed of greatness, as have I, of power exceeding even that of the High Masters. It can be yours. I can help you attain it. You can be everything you desire. You are right. I have craved more power than I could ever hope to wield. Dark, no. Then you accept. But I have seen what such desires do to others. The priestess whose lust for dominance did not abate over five centuries. Stroph, who saw himself equal to a demon lord. Fend, blind to the futility of his ambition. 
And then there's you. No. I will have what the elements see fit to grant me. Nothing more. Then you are just another fool. I can live with that. Are you okay? Ah, uh, I've been better. What happens now? I think Pyres has an appointment with the dungeon hall. We have a dungeon hall? <laughs> we will. Soon. If either of you are wondering, I'm fine. Take your time. The morning came, and with it, many changes. Through our tower, the High Masters of Dominatra were apprised of the previous night's events. The King would reassess Lord Megyle's posting in Iganor. Measures would be taken to ensure nothing like the threat Pyres posed would happen again. As for the former master, he would spend his remaining days in our dungeon hall. For myself, I had saved both Bort and Varner. Blessed with their gratitude, I eagerly awaited my impending initiation. Initiate Dark, you have successfully completed your tasks using your considerable intelligence and skills. You have shown great competence in your abilities. More importantly, you employed them to protect the township from the Fire Master's vile machinations. As a result of your good judgment, the Priestess remains imprisoned in her island palace. We will see to it that she remains undisturbed, until such a time that she may be useful to us again. On behalf of my people, not least my son, accept our congratulations and thanks. Your name will be spoken in our realm with honor and reverence for many years to come. Your handling of the goblin situation prevented a serious breach of the natural law. Thanks to you, the inhabitants of the lower world shall remain where they belong, in the beliefs and tales of the human mind. If I may be allowed to speak, this initiate has performed above and beyond any who have come before him. His actions saved my life, enabled Pyres' defeat, and protected Iganor from a political firestorm. As the new Firemaster, I extend my endless thanks to him. So noted. Come, Initiate Dark. Kneel before us. We all have a beginning. A moment that defines us shapes us into something new. For some, that moment is painless, unnoticed. For others, it is a sharper turn, one that comes at a cost, a loss. Change is inevitable. I know my beginning. I know where it has taken me. The future becomes history. Some remembered, most not. As I go forward, two things are certain. I am dark. I am a mage.
What took you so long? <laughs> 